Hey, Drecky here, and today I'm reviewing the iLife V3S Robot Vacuum. I'm going to do something a little bit unusual today, and I'm not actually giving this review a star rating. That's because I don't actually have that much experience with other robot vacuums, and I don't think it's fair for me to give it you know, a 4 out of 5 or a 5 out of 5 when I don't really know what other products in the category offer. That being said, I can just tell you what my experience was like with this vacuum, and it's positive so far. I found that this vacuum would be good for someone who has smaller space and primarily hard flooring, People with larger spaces and carpet, I'd recommend a more advanced device, such as the iLife A4 or a real Roomba, but as long as you're aware of its limitations, this lower-end model will work great for you. The iLife V3S is a standard puck design, which gives it a clean look and a fairly low profile. It's just over 3.5 inches high, which means that it can fit under some furniture and beds. The front has wall sensors and the underside has drop sensors. There is a hole for suction and two little brushes that sweep the dirt into the hole. A microfiber sweeping cloth is included for the underside as well. The dustbin is easy to clean out just by opening the top. To start the vacuum, all it takes is just pressing a single button on the remote or scheduling a time. Also make sure to clean anything like cables off of the floor so that the vacuum doesn't get tangled on them. Since this is the base model of iLife's robot vacuums, this vacuum is designed for smaller areas and primarily hard flooring. The suction is excellent on linoleum and hard wood, about as good as my normal vacuum. In the last two weeks, I don't think my kitchen has ever been so consistently clean. On thin carpet like the floor mat at my entrance, this vacuum continues to perform well, sweeping and sucking up dust and bits of dirt. On heavier carpet though, the vacuum doesn't perform as well. This is because the suction hole is central to the vacuum and doesn't always hit the entire carpet in one go. The vacuum just doesn't overlap itself enough likely because it thinks that its little sweepers are pulling dust towards the suction, but on heavy carpet the sweepers aren't very effective. I've been using this vacuum twice per week, but I will end up supplementing it with my real vacuum occasionally just to do a deep clean of my bigger carpet. If you want the vacuum to focus on a specific room, just close the door, otherwise it will roam around the house from room to room, more or less at random until its battery runs out and it tries to return to the base. The first thing the vacuum cleaner does is find an outline of the room, trace it, and then it starts to zigzag haphazardly around the room. From my experience, this manages to clean about 95% of hard floor space consistently every time, so if I'm running it twice per week, I rarely find that it misses anything. On the heavier carpet though, it's closer to about 75%. It's enough that running the vacuum twice a week means I don't have to touch up very often with my regular vacuum, but keep in mind that if you have thick rugs, you may want to invest in a higher end model that has a proper carpet brush and wider suction. Also, because of the random cleaning patterns, the marks it leaves on the carpet are not the most visually appealing. I think that this vacuum is a pretty nice complement to a regular vacuum, because you'll still need a regular vacuum to get between cupboards or up high where a robot vacuum can't go. In terms of its volume, compared to my normal vacuum, the robot is about half. On hard flooring, the sound is noticeable, but I'm still able to hold a conversation at normal volume whereas on carpet it's pretty quiet because the motor noise gets muffled. With headphones on, I'm barely able to hear it running, but I wouldn't necessarily want to watch TV with it in the same room. In terms of battery life, the battery lasts for about an hour and a half of cleaning. That's enough for a standard two-bedroom apartment or a smaller three-bedroom. For a multi-level house, it's likely that each floor would need to be done as separate charges. Remaining battery is indicated by lights on top of the vacuum, and there is a button on the remote to return the vacuum to home early. After the battery dies, the vacuum stops sucking and the robot wanders around seemingly at random until it passes in line with its base. Then it stops hunting, lines itself up, and wheels on. If the vacuum is in another room, it may not find its way back, but if it's in the same room as its base, it usually finds its way home fairly quick. It's best if the base is kept away from obstacles, otherwise the robot may not make it back because it'll get stuck trying to line itself up. That's really the only issue I had with the vacuum, is that sometimes it doesn't find its home and I need to put it back myself. In conclusion, this little vacuum has good suction on hard floors and thin carpet. It's made cleaning a lot easier since I can get other things done while the vacuum is doing its own thing. If you've got thick carpet, I'd recommend buying the A4, but if you're primarily hard flooring in a smaller apartment or house, this little guy will do the trick. It makes a good complement to a traditional vacuum, but it doesn't fully replace them because you'll need the traditional vacuum for doing deep cleaning on carpets or hard to reach places. But I love not having to pull out the big vacuum as often, so I'd recommend buying something like this to people who have pets who shed or need to vacuum all the time, because it is pretty convenient to just press a button and have the thing bounce around a bit and then your floors are clean. Thank you for watching. Visit for more.